Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's broadcast, Antimicrobial Resistance Identification, Strain Typing, and Assay Design with CLC Genomics Workbench, presented by Winnie Witterberg, Senior Scientist, Microbial Genomics, Kyogen. I am Alexis Cross of LabRoots, and I will be your moderator for today's event. We are delighted to bring you this educational web seminar presented by LabRoots and sponsored by Kyogen. For more information about our sponsor, please visit www.kyogen.com. Before we begin, I would like to remind everyone that this event is interactive. We encourage you to participate by submitting as many questions as you want at any time you want during the presentation. Just click on the Ask a Question box located on the far left of your screen and type your questions into the drop-down box that appears on the screen. Our speaker will respond to your questions via email. If you have trouble seeing or hearing the presentation, please click on the Ask a Question box to let us know that you're having a problem. This presentation is educational and thus offers continuing education credits. Please click on the Continuing Education Credits tab located in the top right of the presentation window and follow the process to obtain your credits. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Ritterberg. I will now turn the presentation over to her. Thank you for that introduction. Um, as we all know, uh, whole genome sequencing is uh, becoming a standard for investigating bacterial isolates for a range of applications, um, from uh, clinical microbiology and food safety to biosurveillance. So correctly identifying the pathogen, knowing the subtype, and any potential resistance markers can all be essential for monitoring uh, pathogens. So Kajan Bioinformatics offers a comprehensive set of tools for microbial genomics. And uh, today, during the session, I will demonstrate the tools needed for analyzing whole genome sequencing data from pathogens uh, for uh, taxonomic identification of an isolate assigning a sequence type, detecting antimicrobial resistance markers, and tracing an outbreak via SNP-based analysis. So for demonstration purposes, we have chosen this study, uh, evaluation of whole genome sequencing for outbreak detection of Salmonella enterica, which has been published in PLOS One. Uh, Salmonella is a common cause of infectious diseases, and the genus is divided into Salmonella bongori and Salmonella enterica. Salmonella enterica alone has more than 2,500 different serotypes. Serovar enteritis and Serovar epithemurium uh, are the cause of uh, more than 75% of all human Salmonella infections. The study we have chosen for demonstration springs from a Danish laboratory-based surveillance of human gastrointestinal infections over 10 years, and it describes the collection of 47 Salmonella isolates. So the study contains isolates from six different outbreaks, plus a number of unrelated background isolates. Uh, but for, for this demonstration, in the interest of time, uh, we have selected just five isolates. All of the data analysis will be performed with a CLC Genomics Workbench and the CLC Microbial Genomics Module. So I know many of you are, are probably familiar with this, but I'll just briefly introduce our software solution, which uh, supports analysis in the areas of genomics, molecular biology, metagenomics and typing, epigenomics, and transcriptomics. So at the core, we have the CLC Genomics Workbench, which can uh, be extended with plugins. For example, we have the plugin CLC Microbial Genomics Module, which contains all tools for microbial genomics, enabling microbiome analysis and pathogen checking. The plugin uh, CLC Genome Finishing Module contains tools required for producing high quality genome assemblies and reference genomes. We collaborate with external partners to provide our users with the functionalities of Cosmos ID, MetagenMark, and Plastico. Our solution is fully scalable to meet any sample throughput, so you can run your analysis locally or uh, through our genomics server. So I'll now demonstrate how to use our tool to analyze 
uh, whole genome sequencing data uh, using the, the before mentioned case of uh, Salmonella. The overall steps I will go through are uh, assigning a taxonomy to the isolate, finding the uh, multi local sequence type, investigate the phylogenetic relationships of the isolate, and finally uh, to look for antimicrobial uh, resistance genes. But before we can get started on the analysis, we first need to do um, a bit of uh, setup. So um, we will need to uh, import our sequencing data. We will uh, import any metadata we have available. And then we will set up what we call a result metadata table, which is essentially a table uh, that will uh, link uh, the, the raw read data, uh, any metadata, and also all of the result files uh, that we uh, generate. So uh, I will now switch to, um, to a live demo. Okay, so this is uh, what our um, the CLC genomics work in description. So at the very top, we have the navigation area uh, with the file system where you can store all of your imported files. And then down here at the bottom, uh, we have a toolbox with uh, all of the tools uh, that we're going to use. So the toolbox can also be found up here at the top, uh, containing uh, all of the available tools. So um, for this demonstration, we're going to use the uh, Macro Dynamics module. So whenever you install a plugin, uh, it will show up with the tools for that plugin uh, in one of these sort of structures. So the first thing uh, we need to do is to uh, import our data. So for that, we will click on import. And as you can see, there's a range of uh, sequence files uh, supported. And in this case, it's Illumina data. Uh, so here you would uh, specify the file path to your sequencing files, and you can select uh, um, the paired read options and and the paired read information. So I, I won't do this now. I have already uh, imported the data, and we can just take a look up here. And so I have created I, I created a folder for this demo called Salmonella, and then the reads are here. So as you can see. We have five read files, uh, one for each of the salmonella isolates that we are going to work with. The next thing we need to do is to uh, import metadata that will describe um, all of the isolates. So again, go to import and go to import metadata. So up here, it will prompt us to specify a spreadsheet. And I have put mine uh, on the desktop. And as soon as we have selected the metadata spreadsheet, uh, we can see uh, we can see the uh, the information from the spreadsheet uh, in this window. So going next, then we need to specify where our raw data is uh, located in the file system. So we will just select the five read files, and then here we can select either an exact or a partial match. So this will uh, it will it the choice will depend on, on, on the naming of the, of the read files and the files in the metadata sheet. But here we can select uh, exact. And then we need to specify what we want to save uh, the metadata sheet. Okay, so it opens up here. We can see uh, the metadata uh, sheet here. Um, so the final thing we need to do uh, before we're ready to start the analysis is to set up a result metadata table. So we will go to uh, the microbial genomics module. We will go to typing and epidemiology. And down here, we have a result metadata folder. And we will click on create result metadata table. So uh, we need to uh, select our metadata table. And this has already been uh, selected. Um, then we need to. Uh, just say save, and we need to um, specify what we want to save it. Click finish, and it has already been made. So if we open uh, the metadata uh, table, 
for the metadata result table. Um, you can see at, at this minute it's, uh, it's empty, so we will click add novel sample. And there we go, the five samples that have been specified in our metadata table have now been uh, put into the result metadata table. So if we select all five samples, we can say uh, find associated data. And you can see here that there are now five, um, five elements uh, associated with this metadata. And this has, has uh, the role of sample, which uh, means that this, these are the raw, um, the raw lead files. So we will just need to save this, and then we are ready to go. Okay, so we'll just go back to the presentation. Um, okay, so uh, the first thing we want to do analysis-wide is to do a taxonomic assignment for these five isolates. So we will start by uh, trimming the sequences. Then we will need to download a pathogen reference database in order to assign taxonomy. And then from this uh, reference database, we will find the best matching reference. And the shots from this will be um, a list of taxonomy of the closest related genome and also a list of uh, potential contaminants. So I will now go back to the live demonstration. Okay, so uh, as I mentioned, the first thing we need to do is uh, to trim the reads. So we will go to the toolbox, and this is one of our uh, core tools. So we'll go to the NGS core tool and find the tool called Trim Reads. Then we will uh, select uh, the five samples from which we want to uh, uh, trim the reads. And remember to click the batch option, otherwise the software will think that these uh, five sequencing files belong to, the, to just one isolate. So the batch option. Here we can specify uh, the parameters for the quality trimming. We will leave it to default. And here, uh, if, if applicable, mm -hmm. we could, uh, we could uh, specify uh, an adapter list, but we won't do this for now. Okay, and we just need to uh, specify what we want to save it. So I want to create a new folder called trimmed read. Okay, and we're going to uh, store the reads in there. So as you see, now we have a folder here called trimmed read. And we have, um, we have the file and we have um, uh, a trimming report. We can also go to uh, the result metadata table and click the refresh button. And you can now see that it has added a further 10 elements. So we now also have the trim grid and we have uh, some trimming reports. So if we open a trimming report, this will uh, simply tell you uh, how many reads were in the original file, how many reads were trimmed, and the length after trimming. So uh, now we have trimmed the reads. So what we'll need to do now is to download a pathogen reference database. And we have uh, a number of tools uh, that can do this. Um, I will just show one for, for this uh, demo. So if we go to uh, databases in the uh, Microbial Dynamics module tab, uh, we have a taxonomic analysis. And as you can see, there are different options. But for now, we will select Download Pathogen Reference Database. So here, you can see we can download directly uh, from NCBI, either from RepSeq or from the Pathogen Detection Project. Um, so here, we can uh, select pathogens, and we can specify the, uh, the specific organism from which we want to download data. So this, this takes a bit of time, uh, which we can't do in this presentation. So I have already downloaded uh, the database, and I can show you here. I have saved all of these in a, in a folder called reference. And here we have a list of uh, downloaded uh, salmonella references. So um, now we need to assign uh, taxonomy uh, to the five isolates. And um, we will use the tool called Find Best Matches using KMS Spectra. We have other tools uh, like our taxonomic profiling tool. 
but uh, I will use uh, use this KMA based tool for this uh, demo. So we need to select um, the trimmed reef. And again, we need to specify that this is a batch of five isolates. So we've now run the analysis on all five samples uh, in one go. Um, here we can specify uh, the reference we want to use. So if you go into the reference folder and we will select the reference database that we downloaded previously. And then you can also specify uh, the KMU length and the index. Okay, and we will uh, need to um, define a, a folder for um, putting the results in. And I will just call it text file. So what we can see down here at bottom, where we have selected a toolbox, there's also a process bar where we can follow uh, follow the process of any tools we're running. So we can see that it, it's uh, coming uh, along nicely here. Um, so that was the first sample done. So if we click uh, refresh in the uh, results metadata table, uh, it will add um, the new results uh, from this analysis. And as you can see, it will, it will give you a, a best match a sequence list of the best match. It will produce a table. It will produce a quality report, which will also contain any information on uh, potential contamination. And then um, after it has used the k spectrum to uh, select the best reference, it will then uh, map the reads onto that selected uh, best reference. So, if we, for example, go to this uh, quality report while the remaining uh, processes are running, we can see that for this uh, this isolate, 94% of, of the reads map to uh, this reference uh, achievement. Um, and we can also see the average coverage and the percentage of the reference that has been covered. Let's refresh this again. Um, so, um, okay, so if you, for example, look at uh, example, oh, sorry, not this one. We'll just need to wait for it to uh, to run through the uh, the final sample. I wanted, I wanted to show you uh, this sample of 32, the quality report here. So as you can see, we have 49% uh, of the reads mapping to this uh, salmonella reference. But as you can also see, we have 41% of the reads mapping to Seborius, which means that in this particular sample, uh, there is contamination from the Seborius. So um, if we now take a look at all of the different uh, the different reports that have been made, we can now see that this sample uh, ending with number 12. So that one is matching um, to, to, uh, to this particular reference, while the other one down here is uh, matching another uh, reference. Um, so as you can see, they are not uh, they are not matching the, the same reference. So it's not a it's not a single plate of salmonella we're dealing with here. Okay, so going back uh, to the presentation. So uh, the next thing we want to do is to uh, assign a multilocus sequence type to the uh, to the salmonella isolate. And uh, the input for, for this MLC tool will be uh, read mapping to the best matching reference um, identified just previously. Uh, then we will need to improve a bit on the mapping to ensure that our uh, results are reliable. So we will do some uh, local realignment. Uh, then we need to download uh, the MLC scheme. Uh, we have uh, direct access to all schemes available at top MLC directly from within the software. And then finally, we need to assign uh, a sequence type. Uh, so this will give us um, 
the, the MLC loci identifies, uh, and it will also output uh, the read mapping to each specific loci. So switching back to, um, to the live demo. Okay, so as I mentioned, uh, the input uh, for the NGS MLC tool is a read mapping file. Um, and so we will need to, um, to do a local realignment. So we will go to uh, the toolbox, and this is one of our NGS core tools. And we will select uh, local realignment. So uh, these results are in here. So we have uh, the mapping, the read mapping files here. And um, in the interest of time, I'll just show this for one isolate. This can also be performed as a batch, but it will take a bit longer. Okay, so everything is fine. Just uh, make sure that the create um, standalone read mapping is, is uh, selected here. Okay, and we will uh, create a new folder for all of the uh, results um, related to MLC. And click finish. So if we go up to the MLC folder, uh, we now have um, our realigned mapping files. And as you can see, uh, the file name has now got an extension in it, so it's now called locally realigned. So um, to further improve on the, uh, on the mapping, we will call uh, indents and structural variants. So this is part of our resequencing analysis tool. So we will find it here called indels and structural variants. And we will now select uh, the locally realigned uh, mapping file. And we will save it in the same folder. And the final thing we will do is then uh, use the information from uh, the Intel file. So as you can see, it has now produced some new files here. For example, this uh, Intel file. So we will do another uh, local uh, realignment uh, on the already uh, aligned, uh, the, the already locally uh, realigned um, mapping file. But this time, we'll then, as a, as a guidance variant track, we will uh, select the, uh, the Intel file that we just created. and save it in the MLT folder. And this will give us uh, a much improved uh, mapping file that we can then uh, use to, uh, to call the uh, MLT low sequence. So what we'll need to do before we can uh, use the MLT tool is to um, download uh, an MLT uh, reference database. So if we go again under uh, the Maclova Dynamics module, and go to databases, and that's an NGS MLST uh, folder, and we can say download MLST scheme. So if we open this tool, uh, there's a, this is a list containing all of the available uh, MLST schemes from top MLST, and we will select Salmonella and Terica. Let's press finish, and it will open, uh, open the MLST scheme so you can see the different genes and all of the other ones in here. So I just, I'll just save this. Put it in my reference folder. Mm -hmm. I'll just see where we put it. So here, you can now see that we have saved a file called Salmonella and Terica. And you can also see that it, it has been marked with the date that it was downloaded. So we can always keep track on which version of the downloaded um, MLST scheme we are working with. So the final thing we need to do is find the, um, the MLST uh, tool. So we close this database. So again, in uh, the Macroba Dynamics module tab, go to uh, NGS MLST and uh, identify MLST. So this is the tool. And uh, we need to select the, the double realigned mapping file. So here you can see it's locally realigned, locally realigned. So we will use that. 
and we need to select our uh, MRC scheme. And uh, as you can see here, we can uh, select when the tool will uh, report a low coverage. And as the default, it's set to 30, and we want to use this for this demo. Save the results in the MLC folder. And click Finish. Okay, so as you can see, it now prompts us with a warning that there was a low coverage region. So if we find um, the NGS MLC report, open this. Uh, then you can see that at the top we have a summary of the results. So this particular isolate was a uh, sequence type A19. You can see uh, all of the different genes that have been analyzed in the scheme. And uh, you can see the little number and also the low coverage. So you can also uh, go and view the individual mapping at each of the uh, MLSC loci. Uh, I won't do this now, but it is, uh, it is possible. So going back to the uh, show. So uh, the next thing we want to do with our isolates is to investigate if they could form part of the same uh, outbreak. So uh, as you might remember from uh, from the first analysis we did uh, on identifying uh, the, the taxonomy of the isolates, uh, we could see from those results that they do not belong to um, to the same clade, so therefore the files have not been mapped to the same reference. And in order to uh, perform an outbreak analysis uh, using uh, SNPs, we need all of the files to be mapped to the same reference. So for this analysis, the first thing we need to do is to identify a common reference for all of the isolates, and we will do that by calculating a k-mat tree. Then from that uh, selected common reference, we will map our reads from the five isolates onto the same reference, we'll call the variant, and then we will uh, create a SNP tree based on these variants. The results from these analysis uh, will be a dendrogram on which we can display uh, different layers of uh, metadata. So again, going back to the uh, to the to the software. Okay, so here we go. So the first thing we need to do is uh, to find a common reference, and we will produce a k-mu tree um, based on our uh, trimmed reads and a list of uh, salmonella reference genomes. So going again to the toolbox, uh, down here we have a create k-mu tree tool. So if we open that, then we need to uh, select our trimmed reads. And we also need to uh, select some someone in a reference genomes uh, for the tool to match up against. Um, so we need to specify the results metadata table in order for uh, the tool to link the results to our metadata and the input. And save it. And again, I'll just, I'll just create a folder. Hold on. And we will save our results here. And here you can see the process. So it's just uh, counting all of the different k-means from the, from the individual root files. It will just take a short time. So here we have uh, the result of chemistry, and if we open this, uh, then we can see that uh, the uh, the uh, potential outbreak isolates are the one named ERR. So we have two outbreak isolates up here, and we have three down here in this cluster. And uh, we will select this genome as the reference genome for for further analysis. So we can now close um, the k and what we want to do now is 
uh, using this common reference, we want to map the individual read files to this reference. Uh, so we have uh, created uh, um, a workflow that will do this and also a uh, call variant. And um, we go to this uh, workflow folder and we select this uh, map specified reference. And if we open a copy of it, it will open and we can visualize what it will do. So it actually starts by trimming the reads. We have already done that, so it doesn't matter. Uh, then it will uh, map the reads onto the reference. It will um, it will improve on on the mapping using lo local realignment, and it will also perform some basic variant detection. So if we double click on the on the tool uh, for the uh, map reads to reference, we can specify the reference. And as we saw from the KMA tree, it was this reference that was this is matched to all of the outbreak isolates. And click finish. So that would be saved now and locked to the setting that this is the reference we want to use. And uh, then we need to specify where it should put or where it should link all of the sort files to. So the uh, result meter in the table. We just need to tell it where this is located. Okay, and the final thing we need to do is to save the workflow. So we will save a copy of it and we just put it in the output folder. Okay, so now we are ready to um, run uh, the workflow. So we can go to uh, the result metadata table. Uh, make sure we have all of our results in there. And then we can, if you go to the to the roles and then find our trim reads, select our five trim reads. Then we can say uh, with selected, and then we can say run copy of map to specified reference. Then from here we can start directly uh, the workflow. So as you can see out here on the left, um, this is all all of the different tools. It will start, or we can specify our parameters, um, and it has already because we selected uh, the read files. In the result metadata table, this has already been selected. So this can be uh, an advantage if you are working with uh, many, many isolates, and this is an easy way to find your and the files you want to work with. So we need to uh, click the batch option, and then just go through the wizard. So as you can see, the result metadata table has already been specified. Um, these are the trimming parameters. Uh, the the reference for the uh, map reads to reference tool has already been selected. And we will just go through these. And then we need to specify where we want to save uh, the result files in the output folder. So the only thing you need to be aware of is that if you want to run or start uh, workflows directly from the result metadata table, uh, a copy of the workflow needs to be open um, in the view. Otherwise, it won't recognize it. So we can go to uh, process bar. See how we are doing, doing on the um, progress. So one of the outputs from from this uh, this workflow um, that to specified reference. Is, um, is a list of variants uh, between each of the read files for the different isolates and, and, the, and the common reference that we are mapping against. And these variants will then be the input uh, for us to create a snip tree. So we'll just need to, uh, this will just uh, run for a short while. Uh, so. So using the uh, the SNP tree compared to the uh, KMU tree, uh, the SNP tree will produce a much higher resolution in your outbreak analysis, because it's based on the individual differences between the isolates. 
So um, you will get a very high resolution and your outbreak analysis by the performing uh, tree. So you can see that all of this is broadcast uh, slowly being added to the uh, outbreak result for that we created. So uh, as you can see, what it will produce is uh, a number of files. So it will it will have the trimming report, uh, which we have already looked at when we uh, used the trimming tool in the beginning. Uh, then it has uh, a mapping file uh, for, the, for the local realignment, also taking into account uh, the index. So we have a mapping summary report. And um, then we, we have here, um, a variant file. So we are almost through with the workflow. Just waiting on the, on the last set of results. So once it's done, um, we will uh, find the results in the uh, results needed in a table and start our analysis up here. Okay, so we're done. So we click uh, refresh. You can see a number of um, files have been added to the uh, results metadata table. So if you go to the bottom uh, here and press a uh, quick pointer, then we can say filter remap symmetry. So this will now only show us any files that are valid for symmetry uh, creation. So as you can see, we here have so we have uh, five mapping files, and below we have five variant files. So we will select all ten files, two for each isolate. And we will say uh, with selected, create symmetry. So this will start the tool and create symmetry. I'll show you uh, when it's running. I'll show you where, where else you can find it. And as you can see, because we started this from the result metadata table, uh, the read mapping has already been um, selected. The uh, variant tracks have already been uh, pre-selected. The result metadata table, result metadata table has also been uh, pre-selected. So we will choose uh, the maximum uh, likelihood algorithm. And for the nucleotide substitution model, we will choose the HK1. We will also like the tool to perform a bootstrap analysis. Um, if you are interested in uh, looking at the uh, exact number of SNP differences between any two uh, isolates, uh, you can have the tool create uh, a SNP matrix and output it. But we will just save our symmetry in the outbreak folder. So uh, go to uh, the toolbox while this is working. You can see here that just below uh, the K-Mir tool, uh, we also have a, a tool for create symmetry if you want to, if you prefer to uh, start the tool from the, from the toolbox. Okay, so uh, the symmetry should have been produced now, and if we open it, this is what it looks like. Um, over here on the right, we have a metadata stack. And if we go to the bottom of that, there's a metadata, metadata layer. And we can specify a number of metadata uh, layers. So for example, if we want to display the outbreak number, so you can see that the blue color, that's an isolate uh, from a hospital. The green isolates are from a produce grower. And two uh, red isolates are from a restaurant. And uh, we can add as many metadata layers as we'd like. So we could also just to display the server type, which will then add another metadata layer. Uh, if you uh, really don't like green, you can uh, double click on the uh, on the green square in the in the metadata uh, layout and select any color you'd like, um, and change it to whatever you like. Uh, you can also um, Change the layout of uh, of your um, dendrogram. 
or whatever you would like. Okay, so we'll now go back uh, to the presentation for the final part. Okay, so the last part, um, we want to uh, detect any antimicrobial resistance genes uh, in the genomes of these uh, five salmonella um, isolates. So, um, the input for, for this uh, tool will be the trimmed read, um, or actually it, it will be um, it will be context. So we will need to use trim read to produce a Bonobo assembly. Uh, we will also need to download a database of uh, known resistance genes, uh, and then we will uh, use the uh, find resistance tool, which is based on RestFinder developed by uh, DCP. The results from this analysis will be a list of uh, identified resistance genes for each of the input items. I'll just uh, go back to, um, to, the, to the workbench again. Okay, so as I mentioned, uh, we will need to do a de novo assembly to produce uh, context as the uh, find resistance tool uh, requires either a reference genome, a, a genome, or, or a list of context. Um, so for that, we will go to a uh, toolbox, and um, we will find our de novo sequencing, de novo assembly. And we will select um, our, uh, we'll select our trim tree. There we go. All five of them, and just uh, mark the batch option. And um, we just need to make sure here that we click the option to create similar context um, for the specific tool. Okay, and um, let's create uh, another folder here in the um, in the result called uh, in antimicrobial resistance. So while this is running, uh, we can download uh, the database uh, of known uh, microbial resistance genes. So if we go to uh, the folder with the tools for the microbial genomics module, and then go to, um, to the database folder, and functional analysis, and then download database to find the system. And put it in our new AMR folder. So this will uh, download the database directly from, from the CPU, uh, which is the database used by the rest of the tool. So if we go and check and take a look at the database downloaded, go to AMR, and you can see here that now we have downloaded the database for find the system. And again, this has also been marked with the date that it has been uh, downloaded, so that we can always keep track on which version of the of the database we have been working with. So um, we can just start with the tool for one of these samples. So we can um, go find the tool called Find the System, and just we open that and. Then select uh, the list of conflicts that was produced by the de novo assembly mm -hmm. tool. Then we need to specify the database that the tool should use. Just leave the rest as default and then save the result. And uh, as you can see here, this with the, with the little green icon, that is uh, the table of any identified resistance genes. So if we open that, we can see that the content of this table is a list of uh, identified genes in this particular isolate. Uh, we can see the percent wise identity to the reference in the database. Uh, and then we can see the predicted phenotype. Uh, so that um, 
that uh, antimicrobial resistance gene. Uh, we can also see in the last column that we have an uh, expression number. So this is a direct link uh, to the uh, to that accession um, in CBI. So that this link will take you directly to uh, the NCBI. So just going back to um, that again. Okay, so we have now gone through uh, all of the steps to uh, assign taxonomy to our isolate, uh, find the sequence type, find a mar marker, and investigating the phylogenetic relationship of the isolate. And as you have seen, this requires quite a number of tools. So to make it easier and faster to run all of these analyses in one go, uh, we have collected the tools uh, that you need in a workflow. So, um, this workflow will uh, find uh, the, the best matches. It will identify your MNT. Uh, it will call variants uh, ready for the SNP tree. And it will also um, start the final resistance tool and then output all of the sub files that you need. So uh, the workflow can either be started um, uh, from uh, a single sample or as a batch processing, and I will show the difference when we go back to the uh, to the workbench in a minute. And so the advantages of using these workflows is that it's easy to get them started. Uh, it will save you time in the running because you won't have to go back and start individual tools. Uh, you can run samples in batch mode, and it will also ensure that you have a consistency in all of your parameter settings, so you can lock the workflows and share with colleagues. Um, and make sure that, that you all uh, produce results in the, in the same way. So um, if we go back to uh, the live demo, OK, here we are. So going back to the toolbox, and uh, in the typing and epidemiology folder, uh, let's take a look at um, at the workflows. So uh, there are two ways of starting a workflow. So you can either double click on the icon. And this will take you through a wizard where you can specify the parameters for, for all of, uh, of the individual tools that will run in this workflow. However, uh, if you want to run more than one sample of the batch, you will need to right click and say open copy of workflow. And it will open the workflow uh, like this. And um, you will need to specify uh, down here in the green, uh, double click on the result metadata table, and specify where you have saved that in your folder structure. So, it, so the workflow will know where to output your results. So everything else can be, can be, all of the other parameters can be specified along the way. But if you want to create a workflow with all of the settings locked, you can just click on any tool here, double click, and then specify your parameters. Uh, you can also see with the little lock here, you can lock any parameter you, that you don't want anyone else to um, meddle with. Um, the, the last thing you need to do before you can actually run the workflow is just to save it. So um, then you can, uh, as I showed you before, you can go to, uh, to the result metadata table, and you can find, uh, let's just remove the quiz from there, uh, and then you can, um, you can select your, uh, your input read files. So these are the main ones that are named sample. And then you can, uh, from this, uh, this table, you can start the workflow. So I won't start the workflow because obviously it will go through all of the steps we have just gone through manually, and it will take some time. But I will just show you. I have computed this already, and I just want to highlight. Uh, so if you go to and open the result metadata table that has been produced or filled in uh, with this um, from this uh, running this workflow, just. Uh, at all the data. So you can see uh, the workflow will produce 150 files, result files. 
Um, so up here in the top, you will have, as you saw before, we will have all of the specified metadata. Uh, so the ID for the sequencing files and the outbreak numbers. But what you will also have, and this is one of the major advantages of running a workflow and linking it to the result metadata table, is that it will also produce a summary of your results. So here you can see the results from the batch match um, analysis, so using the Kenya tool. And you, you can see much clearer here now that uh, these isolates are um, all mapping to different um, references. You can see uh, you can see here uh, the results from the contamination report. So you can see that one of the isolates had a contamination with uh, Staph aureus. And uh, we can also find the MLST results. And we can find the results from the, uh, from the antimicrobial resistance finding tool. So this will create a summary and you can directly go to each of the different result files from this table. Just go for a final time, go back to, uh, to the presentation. Okay, so uh, if, uh, if this is further your interest, you can go to our website at www.biogenbioinformatics.com and download a free trial of the software. So uh, to perform these analysis, you will need to download both the uh, CNC Genomics Workbench and the plugin, the uh, CNC Microbial Genomics Module. Um, and at the website, you can also find a range of step-by-step uh, -step tutorials and video tutorials showing how to use uh, many of the functionalities within uh, the workbench and the module. And so with that, um, I will end this presentation, and I will thank you for, uh, for attending. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ritterberg, for that informative presentation. We will now start the Q&A portion of the webinar and will address some of the most commonly asked questions by our viewers. If you have any questions you'd like to ask, please do so now. Just click on the Ask a Question drop-down box located on the far left of your presentation window, type your question into the box that appears on your screen, and click the Send button. Our speaker will follow up with your questions via email. So let's get started. Our first question is, is it possible to get data and results out of the CLC software, for example, for making graphical representations or tables? Uh, thank you for that question. Uh, yes. Uh, any tables and any graphical output can be exported in all uh, standard formats. So, for example, if you want to export a table, uh, that you can use for other software, for example, if you want to export it to Excel, you can uh, export it as a, as a standard CSV file. And all of the graphics can be exported in any uh, standard imaging uh, file. And it looks like we have time for one more question. If I have analyzed a group of outbreak isolates, and then at a later time point discover an isolate that I suspect to belong to the same outbreak, do I need to perform all analysis over again to include this new isolate? No. If you have used the uh, the result metadata table, you can in your in your original metadata file you will just add information on that one new isolate that you wish to uh, to include in the analysis. Then it will be linked to the result metadata table, uh, and then you can uh, run analysis on just that one isolate. Um, and then uh, the only thing you would need to rerun would be uh, the SNP tree uh, tool uh, to also include the isolate uh, on the on the on the gender gram to get a visual uh, of uh, of where that new isolate belongs uh, with the with the outbreak of the original stream. I would like to once again thank Dr. Ritterberg for her presentation. I would also like to thank Labroots and our sponsor, Kyogen, for making today's educational webcast possible. Before we go, I want to let everyone know that today's webcast will be available for on-demand viewing through December of 2018. You will receive an email from Labroots letting you know when this webcast will be available for replay. Please share that announcement with your colleagues who may have missed today's event. 
That's all for now. Thank you for joining us, and we hope to see you again soon. Goodbye.